Hello class, this video is going to cover 5.3, which is um, exponential and logarithmic properties. Um, it's still in the same chapter, but 5.3 is about the properties, okay? Um, and so we're gonna talk about the change of base property, we're gonna talk about general properties of logarithms, and then we're gonna talk about how to use those properties to rewrite some expressions. So the first thing we have here is, um, that was the wrong thing, is the change of base formula. And in the change of base formula, we have to recall those two buttons that you have on your calculator. So since our calculators have those two buttons, um, and I don't have my black calculator with me, so I do have this one, but it's different. My buttons are separated where y'all's on the black calculator um, are connected. So let me see if I can find my calculator. I think I left it on my desk at home. Okay, so I don't have the right calculator, but nonetheless, on your calculator you have, and y'all might not even be using the same calculator that I asked you to use, but there's two buttons here, one log and one ln. However, we know that when it's just log by itself, right? We remember from the last video, when it's log by itself of some number, it's actually log base 10 of some number, okay? Um, and if I have ln, natural log of some number, that's actually saying log base e of that number. Okay, now you cannot type in expressions that are not log base 10 and log base E in your calculator. Your calculator only has these two bases and that's it. So the issue is, is what if I wanna type in something like log base four of 25? How do we type that in the calculator, okay? And so the whole point is, is that because my calculator does only has base 10 and base E, it, my calculator does not do base four. So there's gotta be another way I can evaluate these expressions using my calculator. And lo and behold, there is a formula called the change of base formula that does allow us to turn a log base four problem into a log base 10 problem, or it can change the log base four into a log base E which is the natural log, okay? And this is the change of base formula, okay? So this is the general formula, meaning you can change your base into whatever you want, okay? But because we, the point of doing this is so that we can put it in our calculator, these are the only two buttons we have in our calculator, which is the log base 10 and the log base E. So it really doesn't matter what base you choose, notice that you end up taking the log of the argument over the log of the old base, okay? So notice when I'm using the regular log button, it's log of the argument over log of the old base. Same thing if I'm doing the natural log, it's going to be the natural log of the argument over the natural log of the, of the base, okay? Now for me personally, I see that it says log and to, to quickly identify that I changed the base, I like to use this one because it literally went from saying log to ln. So it's obvious, more obvious that the base has been changed, okay? So this is usually the one that I use whenever I'm changing my base. You're not required to, you can use regular logs, um, but I always use the ln. So for me, if I were doing this problem right here, log base four of 25, Personally, me, I would have done ln of 25 over ln of the old base. And if I type that in my calculator, um, fraction ln of 25 over ln of four, I literally get the same number that they get. So notice they got the exact same number as I did. So it doesn't matter what base you change it to, that ratio will always come out to be this same value, okay? So um, 
I literally just type in the whole thing and then I get this. And the same thing here, I wouldn't have done this middle step. I would have just typed in this whole fraction and you would get this decimal, okay? But that's literally how this change of base formula is gonna work, okay? And so there may be some times where we can use it. And now that you know the formula, now you know how to use your calculator to evaluate these things. There are some problems in the earlier sections um, where you had to evaluate it. And what did we do? We changed it to the form and we had to think about it for a little bit. And then we figured out what the answer was. Um, but now you can just plug it in your calculator. Okay, so if you saw something like that on the test, you would know how to plug it in your calculator. Now, um, this is kind of just giving you a little heads up of the formulas that are about to come up, the properties. It says, you know from the preceding section that the logarithmic function with base A is the inverse function of the exponential function with the base A. So it makes sense that the properties of exponents have corresponding properties involving logarithms. For instance, the exponential property, um, a base to a power times another same base with a different power, you just add their exponents. Think of this, this is literally how you use it. If I have x squared times x cubed, I get x to the fifth because I'm adding those exponents, okay? Now in logarithms, it's different. So if I have log two of um, three x, what it's saying is that I can split this up. It actually goes the other way around. Um, whenever you're multiplying quantities, what you end up doing is adding their individual exponents, right? So if I split this up, I have log two of three plus log two of X. And now those are the individual um, exponents, okay? So here is the summary of all of them. There are three. So we have, when you're multiplying an argument, you can separate that product inside the argument into two separate logs and a product will result in a plus in between the logs. Same thing for a quotient, okay? If you were doing the log of this argument, it can split it up into two. It's gonna be the log of the top and then minus to symbolize the division and then log of the bottom, okay? So it always has to be the top log minus the bottom log. And then here, this is like you're taking this exponent and you're bringing it to the front, okay? So normally when we write logarithms, we never write the arguments with exponents. They won't write it like that. What they'll do is they'll write it as a coefficient in front of the log, okay? And you can go in both directions. You can go have an expression that looks like this and rewrite it like the right-hand side, or you can start with an expression that looks like the right-hand side and then have to rewrite it to look like the left-hand side, okay? And it can be used with any base, including the natural log base and including the common log base, okay? Any base, these properties apply to all of them. You just have to have matching bases when you split it up, or if it's already split up, these have to match before you can put them together, okay? So now we have um, rewrite each logarithm in terms of ln of two and ln of three. Now this one's a little difficult, but because it's already written down, it's helpful. You have to write six in terms of twos and threes. So what could you do with a bunch of twos and threes to get six? Well, we know that two times three is six, okay? So, um, but we have a log property, the product property that says if I'm multiplying two arguments together, I can split it up into two logs and the product will result in a plus between those two logs. And whatever kind of log you're taking, whether it's LN, just regular log, or log with a base, you have to keep that same kind of log for both of these arguments, okay? And so then this is written in terms of LN of two and LN of three, so we're done. This one's a little bit harder. They did rewrite this using the quotient property, right? Because you're taking the LN of the whole fraction, so that means ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. And then they realize that 27 is actually three cubed. And then we have that one rule that says we can take the exponents of our arguments and write them as coefficients of our arguments, of our logarithms. 
So then the expression ends up becoming ln of two minus three ln of three. So it says the properties of logarithms are useful for rewriting logarithmic expressions in forms that simplify the operations of algebra. This is true because these properties convert complicated products, quotients, and exponential forms into simpler sums, differences, and products respectfully. So for example three, it says each logarithmic expression, expand each logarithmic expression. So you definitely have to be able to identify that you have three factors here. There are three things being multiplied in that one argument, okay? So I am taking log base four of that whole thing, five X cubed Y. And so if you notice, it's five times an X cubed times a Y which means if I wanna split it up, I can do log base four, five, log base four, X cubed, log base four, Y. But because it's a product of all those three, then that means I'm gonna be adding all three of those um, separated logs together, okay? And so that's why you see the plus sign and the plus sign in the middles there. Then we know that we never leave an exponent on our argument, okay? So then this guy will come to the front and that's why you have this three here in the front of this middle term. This one didn't have an exponent and neither did that one. So I did not have to do anything with those two, okay? So now for part B, this one's a little bit more difficult. We have to write the radical as an exponent. So remember the index here is two. And if I put all of this in parentheses, there's a little invisible one. So the exponent becomes the three X minus five and then the invisible one over the index. It's always your exponent over your index when you convert it to a um, radical into a fraction exponent. So then this is a quotient, right? So we're gonna do ln of the top minus ln of the bottom, which is what they did here. And then again, our little exponents can go to the front as coefficients. So it becomes one half times ln, and then the argument is three X minus five. And then you still have that minus ln of seven, but it didn't have any exponents, so it just stays ln of seven. Now we're going to do our practice problems. So it says evaluate the logarithm using the change of base formula. So remember, I like to use the LN. So I'm gonna do LN of the argument over LN of the base, okay? And then round your result to three decimal places. So fraction LN of 13 over LN of three. And I get 2.33 and this seven is gonna make that four go to a five. And we end up with this result. Then now here it says approximate the logarithm using the properties of logarithms given. It's telling me that log, it's not coming out right, but what it's trying to say is that log, log base B of two equals 0 0.3562 and log base B of three equals 0 0.5646, okay? So I don't know what the base is, but it is telling me, it just didn't have the correct notations. B should be a, super, a subscript, okay? And it wants me to find log base B of 18. Now I can't type that in my calculator because in my calculator, I would type ln of 18 over ln of um, B, but I don't know what B is. So I cannot put this in the calculator, okay? So the only other option is to figure out how I'm going to use two and three to get 18. So I know that um, two times three times three, is that it? Let me see. Two times three times three. Yes, that's 18. So then we're going to separate this into three logs. So log base B2 log base b3 and another log base b3 and because it's a product i'm going to add and add in the middle if it were a quotient i would have to do the top minus the bottom okay 
So then now I can plug in these numbers. I know that this is 0 0.3562. And I know that both of these are 0 0.5646. And so then if I type that in my calculator, 0.3562 plus 0.5646 plus 0.5646. I get 1.4854. And that's the answer. Okay. So be very, very careful with um, this one. It's a little difficult. Now, number three says for me to use my properties to expand this one. So notice that I have three things that are multiplied. Right? So it's going to be log base four of 13, log base four of B6, and log base four of C. They're all multiplied together, so there's plus signs in between. And then all I have is this little exponent that needs to come to the front of that log. So my final result would be log base four of 13 plus six log base four of B plus log base four of C. And that's all expanded out. And that's the end of it. So I will see you guys in the next video for 5.4.